Welcome to part three of my, um, I don't even know what this is anymore, uh, Adobe Photoshop CS5 digital portrait semi-tutorial. Um, I mean, it's not like a tutorial insofar as I'm like, this is how you do X, Y, and Z, but it's um, only sped up four times. So what took four hours is sped up to one, which is why it's so super duper long, which is why you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. Um, I might even make like a super sped up version that shows the whole thing in 15 minutes with just like music or something in case you just want to see the process and don't want to hear me talk to you for an hour because you have a life and there are things to do. But people have asked if I could slow it down, so this is me slowing it down. I hope you don't hate it, but I'm still working on the lips. Um, as I was from part two, um, I just, earlier how I talked about using the overlay function to um, up the saturation. A second ago, I uh, that bright pink spot on the lips, it's a little more saturated. That is how I did that. Um, so, fun fact there. Uh, I Throughout this whole thing, I, I tried to stay um, a little more zoomed out so that you could see what's going on, but the particular instances, um, you know, where I zoom in so you can get a better view of the actual paint strokes. Zooming out helps for you to see, you know, the overall changes to the face, but zooming in, you can really get a clear idea of what the heck I'm getting into over here. So, um, because I was uh, using, I was creating a giganto huge file, um, it was, you know, two feet wide by three feet tall at 300 dpi. My computer was um, doing admirably well, but still a wee bit on the sluggish side. So, you know, that's why um, I, my brush pauses a lot, like between recording my screen and um, drawing a massive file, it kind of takes a lot of juice. So the, the old boy has to think a lot, which is another reason why um, the smudge tool kind of had to, to fall by the wayside because um, I know for a lot of you who don't have a ton of RAM, um, it, it can chug. I know that, that my computer, you know, is, is fairly decent. It's a, a Mac Pro and it's still just like whenever you have to, to kind of have it digest that much information of using the smudge and blending these colors for you whenever your computer is doing that much work, it tends to kind of make things drag a little bit, which can be a little disruptive to the process and not to mention incredibly annoying. So that's another reason why we are trying to improve our skills with paintbrush blending because it um, speeds everything along and lets our computer not have a, you know, have stroke out. So um, in order to get, you can see when it's really zoomed in like this, that it is incredibly messy. And I actually am liking this look a lot because, um, A, because you don't really see it when, when you would print it um, because it's, it's such a huge file. Like no one would ever be looking at it this closely. And B, um, it gives it that really nice kind of painted feel that, that, I, that I'm liking a lot lately. Um, and a way to kind of achieve that, that strokey texture is um, to move your brush a lot, to, to do it. Um, I mean, just think about if you were painting on canvas and you wanted a lot of texture and a lot of brush strokes and, and you would kind of shake your hand a little bit more. You'd, you know, create a more erratic movement where you have your brush going off in, you know, multiple directions and you can get that slight variation of, 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 um, of thickness of color, you know, um, and that gives it a nice strokey texture. And then the same thing applies, you know, especially using a graphics tablet um, on the computer. So uh, erratic movements, uh, lots of, gives you lots of texture. And um, I like to also, speaking of texture, once I'm finished with a picture, find like off of like cgtextures.net, I think is the website. Usually I get like a nice like plaster, like a Venetian plaster or a concrete texture, or maybe sometimes even like a paper texture, and um, put that in a layer on top of everything. Set it to overlay mode. First, um, make sure that if it's a color texture, that uh, it usually is a good idea to uh, go to the adjustment and switch it to black and white, and then make the layer overlay, uh, make the blending mode of that layer overlay, and set it to 
I mean, it all depends on the texture, but anywhere from, you know, a very, very small percentage, like 5% up to like 20, I mean, you know, go nuts with it, whatever. But adding that extra little bit of texture um, really helps making a nice uh, skin sort of, sort of texture thing happening and um, kind of gives, can give you some really cool effects. So I've lately gotten really big into that, but um, so yeah, that's, that's always fun. This is me playing around with, uh, you know, using a lot of different brush sizes to help with the blending on the neck. Um, this area was a little weird because the, I didn't really, like, that, the reason, another reason that I chose this particular picture to um, do the portrait of was that I loved his facial expression in this picture, but the actual photo kind of cut him off at the chin and the top of the head. So, so you had this great photo, but it wasn't his whole face. So I was like, oh, that's really awesome. I'll paint this portrait and so it can be you know a finished version it can you can have this picture that exists only you know in the context of this portrait which is awesome but you don't have a reference for the neck and the shirt area which kind of you know leads to consistency issues but I knew that um, the light was really heavy coming from his left hand side and um, so that's why you know you got that really bright swath of light because he you know had the sun on to his left so that's what's going on with the neck um, Sometimes I just, when, you know, when you're in a situation like that, you just kind of fake it and try to, try to use your extensive to meager knowledge, you know, however much you know about anatomy and, um, try to, if you, you know, if you can grab a mirror, use yourself as a reference, you know, your features might not be the exact same, but what's under, you know, and, uh, it might not be the same size or the color or whatever, but what's underneath the skin generally tends to be the same if not similar and you can use that to see where you know if you turned your head a certain way how the how the neck would fold and um all that good stuff so so that usually helps I also keep for like full body stuff I have my little mannequin um but there's also tons of good references on the internet um for different poses like like fineart.sk I think is a site that's really good they've got a lot of um, reference photos that you can use. Um, um, I think like photo references for comicartist.com. I don't just Google that. Um, they've actually got a subscription based service, which is pretty good because then you know that using their photos as reference isn't violating any copyright laws. And speaking of copyright, um, there's kind of a lot of misconception about like referencing versus copying. I know that technically some of the things that I've done are, you know, not strictly, I don't know what's the word in accordance with the way that copyright should work. And I think that, and it's funny because at the time I didn't really think about it, but I've actually taken um, copyright classes in school, so I don't know why I've been such a rube about it, but I've noticed that with the internet, it's kind of like this amorphous blob of information and you're, you know, it's like the wild, wild west out there and and not a lot of people know about um, what they're, what's in accordance with copyright law, what's in violation of copyright law and whatever. So here, you know, here's a little bit of my understanding of it. If anyone knows better than I do, by all means, correct me if I'm wrong. But you have to make sure that when you're referencing an image that you are really referencing it and not copying it. Like some of the stuff that I've done before, like, um, I don't know, like the Alice Cullen piece, that's technically, you know, if someone wanted to pursue it, I might get in trouble for a copyright violation because I made a digital painting of the picture. I didn't trace it per se, but it was solely referenced from that image. Um, when it comes to determining whether or not something is in violation of copyright, uh, I know the courts usually um, judge it based on whether or not it's a derivative work or if it's transformative. And it's kind of funny because if you you know if you look up any any cases, it it goes back and forth on what's transformative and what's um, you know satirical or a parody or you know what counts for for that sort of thing, but. I don't know, I guess a good rule of thumb is always try to to put your own spin on things. Um, and that's what that's what being transformative is. It's did you interpret something new from the work? Did you, you know, if if it's you're usually clear if it's like a caricature or something because that's transformative. That can be satire, that can be um, you know, that can be a statement making piece. But whenever you're going for photo realistically copying a picture you enter in the, into that murky territory of copyright infringement. And um, it's one of those things like you'll probably never in a million years 
have an issue with it unless you're like super famous or unless you, you know, or you're making, having huge commercial success based off of an image. Like for example, there's the, um, Obama hope image that Shepard Ferry did, uh, in, uh, during, you know, the Obama presidential com- campaign, he used an AP photograph as reference and didn't give credit and didn't give, you know, didn't get permission, didn't give monetary compensation to the photographer. And he, I'm not really sure as to the outcome of his legal battle as of yet. I think it might still be, I think they might have settled or something like that. But, um, so they took him to court and Shepard Ferry claimed fair use. He said that, that his work was transformative enough that, um, you know, he didn't have to owe anything to to the uh, original photographer and you know obviously the AP claimed that his work was a derivative of their photograph so I don't even know where I'm going with this it's just best that when you're using photos for reference especially if you're using non-famous people like if you see someone on DeviantArt or just on the internet or on Facebook and you grab their picture and decide oh they're really cute I want to you know I want to do a digital painting of them I really like their expression you know always make sure especially if it's a person that you can easily contact like ask permission it's you know i know on in the world of the internet there's kind of this philosophy that it's better to ask forgiveness than permission but i mean why put all that work into it if you're gonna have to snatch it down or you know lose kind of the rights to to what you've done so just i don't know forewarned is forearmed be aware of the fact that just because it's on the internet doesn't mean you can just grab it and do whatever you want with it especially if you're just doing photo manipulations um that's really not you know as transformative you know if you're just basically using someone's picture in your work make sure that that you kind of cover your ass because because it would suck to put all that effort into it and um get screwed in the end so that is my meager knowledge on copyright in the comments below if you guys you know have anything to contribute to that discussion any like personal stories i'd be really interested to hear it like i said most people you know copying like stills or using like references from like Harry Potter or, you know, any of your favorite movies, it's unlikely that you would face any issue with it. But I mean, you have to think like, how would you feel if, you know, if somebody copied your stuff? And I guess that's kind of the place that I've gotten to with, you know, with the things that I'm working on is like, I want to be as above board as possible. And, um, you know, I don't know. So that's, that's, that's copyright. Uh, it's fun times, but um, ah, I'm almost done with his ear, which is, as we all know, and I will not stop harping about my least favorite part of any painting, but I'm getting fairly, you know, comfortable with them, or I don't know, I guess it's, you know, you get, you see the idea that it's a necessary evil and just kind of get it, you know, get her done. While I'm sitting here floundering for something to talk about for the next, um, 20 minutes or so I guess now would also be a good time to bring up the subject of requests I have been getting a shit ton of requests lately and you know I told I am so appreciative of of all um you know your your interest in in my work and, and the fact that you guys like it and like what I'm doing and I just I think that's you know such a phenomenal reward for any artist but unfortunately I do not have time um I barely have time to answer a lot of the request emails, but I definitely don't have time to do any free requests right now. Um, I, uh, I'm half of half of a business, and uh, the damn thing won't run itself, no matter how much I wish it would. So I'm pretty much working a lot, and that's another reason why my videos are coming so infrequently is that I'm always working. But uh, I'm trying to do more videos I'm trying to get more personal work done but unfortunately um, I don't have a ton of time for the free requests what I will say though is um, by all means you can keep making requests I I will not you know be like oh don't even you know don't even bother me with it occasionally I might see something uh, in your request that I think like wow that's amazing or you know that's something that I wanted to do personally too and um, you know, if I can make both of us happy or, you know, I might think your story is interesting or something like that. I don't, I don't know why I would do one, but you might just catch me at the perfectly right moment and I'll, um, I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll totally do that. So where I'm going with that is feel free to make requests, but just assume that the answer is, you know, I'm terribly sorry. I don't have time for it unless I respond to you and say, 
I'm gonna do it. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm trying to uh, not make people feel bad by my lack of response because honestly, I um, don't spend as much time on YouTube as I should, as I, you know, maintaining this channel as I should. And I get backed up with tons and tons of messages, a surprising amount of messages. And, um, you know, I feel awful that I can't respond to them all. But, but yeah, um, I'm trying and that's all that counts, I guess. Um, so yeah, I guess back to talking about the picture. I'm adding just little flecks of, of light coming through from, from the spaces in his hair. There's kind of really no rhyme or reason to it. Um, there, you know, there was rhyme or reason to it in the reference photo, obviously, but I wasn't copying it, you know, stroke for stroke. I was just kind of giving, you know, the idea of it. So I just picked like a dark, um, like a dark brown color and just started laying out the basic shape of his hair. I've got some pretty sweet uh, hairbrushes. Uh, I think, I think they're actually in that Adonis collection. If not, um, there are some really great brushes by a phenomenal caricature artist named Chris Vall. I think that's how you say it, Vol, Wall, Vol, I don't know. Um, and uh, he has some amazing brushes on his blog spot. If I remember, I will link them in the comments below um, so that you can download them. I think it's, it's super great to have just as many awesome brushes as possible because that just only adds to you know your uh, capabilities to have these these great brushes and these awesome textures so I don't use the hairbrush in this ins instance I stick with the palette knife brush for no particular reason I think I, I might use it um, in a little bit when I'm actually adding the lighter color of the hair like some of the, some of the strands of hair but great brush great awesome hairbrush that comes with the, the brush pack that I use so highly recommend um, trolling the internet and you know finding some pretty sweet brushes to to help out with your process hopefully soon i'll be doing um some stuff related to the graphic novels i say novels the two that i've been you know tossing around in my head um got them pretty much completely scripted in my brain but that doesn't count for shit if you don't actually draw the dang thing so i've been reading um some really great graphic novels online uh I just started uh, catching up on Sphere Theory, S-F-E-E-R Theory. Um, I think it's like Sphere Theory or Sphere.LittleFoolery.com or something like that. Just Google um, Sphere Theory. It's uh, Sphere, S-F-E-E-R is, I think, how you say Sphere in Dutch. So, well, how you spell it, it's you say it the same, but spelled differently. Phenomenally illustrated graphic novel or... Um, I guess not graphic novel, but online comic or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so I've been reading that. Liz Suburbia, just kind of checking out, you know, the Meek and Hannah's Not a Boy's Name. A lot of um, really great free comics online. Like the the quality of work um, that these people put out is amazing and inspiring and really makes me want to, I don't know, start 2011 off right and actually finish some projects or start some projects so that I can even think about finishing them so um hopefully I'll have a ton of videos on that as I'm learning how to um do an online comic maybe you can you know learn it with me I'll I'll share any any insights that I might gain um you know as I look around the web for some for some good uh resources so that should be coming up um, and I always say, I know every video I say, oh, there's a ton of more stuff coming and then there's not. So I'm going to stop making promises. I'm going to try to do you know, a lot more, um, digital art. I might actually, um, do some, some real, not real, obviously this is real too, but some live, um, canvas paints, wet stuff, you know, actual hold in your hands type art too. Um, that's kind of. A promise that I've made myself to get going on this year is to actually paint again um, and actually improve at that which I hope will improve my digital painting and you know hand in hand hand and all you know all that stuff will will get better and and um, everyone will be happy so yay but next priority digital gra or digital comic um, online comic 
um, should be should be pretty sweet so I've got the script in my head I'm starting to get it on paper and then I guess the next step will be doing the thumbnails I know I don't know how interesting that process will be but I think I'll, I'm just gonna start recording everything that I do now that my um, I've upgraded from an iMac to a Mac Pro that's got you know a little more juice to it and doesn't shit a kitten every time I try to do something and record my screen at the same time so basically I'm just gonna you know, turn on the screen recording software whenever I, I crack open Photoshop for for a graphic project and for a non-work related graphic project and um, you know we'll see if if there's anything that, that comes out of that worth showing you guys um, so hopefully there will actually be stuff going on in this channel and not and not uh, months and months of radio silence for me but um, yeah, uh, I just blocked in the color of his shirt. I got that same, um, well, actually this this blue has a little more color to it than the blue that I used for his eyes. So I blocked in using that color. And now, actually, I um, added another layer on top of my color layer. So right now we're at four layers. Um, I added that layer to add his beardy stubble um I gave Marty my boyfriend the option of having his brother with or without stubble and he said like oh you know like he always had stubble so had to include it but I didn't want to go through and have to pick colors um to kind of darken each different area there's you know some different values in there so I created a layer on top of my colors um I set it to multiply and I set the opacity to like 10% really really low and I used that same blue color that I used on the shirt for the um, five o'clock shadow you want to use like um, when you're doing a guy's five o'clock shadow it's usually good to use like a slightly desaturated either like a blue or a green I found that that mixes really well with the skin tone and gives that kind of shadowy look then um, on top of that I used a stippling brush and I went in and um, made like little hair stipples so that it gave it some texture and a little bit of interest. And now I'm using a really cool pore brush from either the Adonis collection or the Chris Fall brushes. I forget which one, but play around with both of them. I was using that to kind of add a little bit of texture to the highlighted areas of his skin. So I used the brush set um, in screen mode with uh, the highlight color from his skin and just tapped it around those areas of highlight to kind of give them some pores. Now I'm using um, like a cloud cloud brush. Um, I'm on the same layer as all my skin colors, uh, and I'm just adding some some texture and some some variation to that background. I wanted to pull in um, use some some darker browns around the corner and just make it like not like he's glowing or anything, but to focus in that lighter background color around his head. So um, I'm just going through. Um, and kind of adding texture. I wanted it to look like a little dry brushed, you know, to have to have a little bit of uh, texture going on. But now I'm back to the palette knife brush, and I'm using the highlight color that the the lightest color of his skin. And I'm still on the color layer. I'm not on the background layer. I'm on, you know, the the topmost layer of color that most of my um, coloring resides on. And I'm just going around his uh, his shape with the. Uh, with the highlight color to just um, separate it out from the background and make give it some interest. So I'm just coloring in really tightly around the edges so I get a nice clean edge. Um, this is the, the also the point where you could clean up, you know, some messier color work. It's, you know, actually kind of nice to not have to really be concerned about it throughout the whole process and just, you know, take care of it at the end when you're, when you're edging it up. So um, that's why I'm actually doing it on my color layer, but I'm just going around and adding um, with really short sharp strokes that that white uh, that uh, light light skin color and then I'm gonna come back in with a bigger brush at a lower opacity and and or at a lower opacity and a lower flow and kind of blend that lighter color with um, the brown in the background uh, so I'm just you know I think I just accidentally skipped there um, Sometimes my recording skips, so if you ever, you know, I'm not trying to cheat you guys out of seeing me do something, it's just sometimes it will randomly not record, and then the next time I notice it, it, it you know, it'll have this crazy jump forward, so so that's what's going on there, um, but yeah, so now I'm going back in with a uh, larger brush, same light skin um, tone color, 
and just uh, set it. I think I I had the flow down to like 10% here, and then the opacity to like 25 to 30, and um, just using a really big brush and an incredibly soft touch and a lot of jerky motions to give it the background uh, some really nice texture. The, the motions are actually a little more jerky and less blended than when I was doing the skin. I like I like a a very painted looking sort of background um, to kind of you know, make it look more like like an oil or acrylic painting or something. And now I'm pulling in that blue color from his shirt and bringing it up to the top um, outer corners of the background. I mean, not to get, you know, all metaphorical with it, but I, I purposely chose the, the dark blue and the, and the warm brown to kind of, I don't know, that's just how I was feeling about this particular piece. So I really like the desaturated... Um, blue kind of creeping in I like the way and I've always liked the way that blue and brown look together but for this particular thing I really wanted it to be like warm and cold at the same time so that was you know a, a priority for me but um still using that same big brush uh at one point I was using a cloud brush for some texture but then I switched back to the palette knife brush because it was just I don't know why I even strayed it was accomplishing what I what I really wanted the kind of blending that I wanted and um the other brush had had a little bit of spacing to it that was giving me a weird repeated sort of texture. Sometimes you'll notice that if you if you get like a circular shape repeated over and over again, that's a spacing issue with the brush that you're using and you want to tweak the brush settings and, and whatnot. So um, now I don't know why I jumped from the shirt to the background. I think I just was really excited about wanting to do the background or figure out what I was doing. So, you know, I went and did that first, but then I came back to the shirt. Um, I chose not to detail it as much as the face and features and stuff because A, I'd been working on this for a while and um, my personal deadline for it was swiftly approaching. I, you know, I wanted to have it finished for his birthday and B, um, I don't know, sometimes I like a really detailed face or really detailed focus area and then um, a more textured, painted sort of... Um, you know, sort of clothing area or background or, you know, secondary focus. So you get that it's a collared shirt. Um, and that's pretty much all I needed, you know, at that point. So it's, uh, you know, pretty simply done. I just used a slightly darker version of the blue, almost black actually. And, um, you know, just scratched in some details really quickly and uh, knocked it out. Um, we're swiftly nearing the end, thankfully of this video, uh, I realized how long an hour would be until I decided to mumble my way through it. Sorry it's so unintelligible and stream of consciousness. If I were actually to think of what I was going to say before I said it, that would require even more time that I don't have, so um, in order for me to make a video, you get this, you know, what you get. So hopefully some of that, something in there helped you out, maybe just watching it um, was interesting for you, um, in some way, and, uh, yeah, I'm about to, um, finish up with the coloring on the shirt, and then one final thing that I do to finish it off, to finish off the picture that I don't really go into detail here, is that I, um, overlay a, uh, plaster texture, so I add one more layer, so that's got me up to, like, five layers total, on the top of everything and um, it's a layer set to overlay mode and it's a black and white plaster texture and I, I mentioned like I think in the first or second video you know about using textures to add texture and you know interest to to your to your work and stuff and you can find some really good textures on cgtextures.net um, and they're free and you know royalty free which is awesome but you know, that's the final piece. Uh, that's, that's Steve for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.